sometimes when I'm in the middle of doing one thing, I got to stop and do something else. And I noticed, uh, I tried to kick this thing in heating a couple weeks ago once it got cold enough just to test this thing in heating. And it uh, had a fault and it said discharge air temperature sensor fault. So down in here, these four at the top are the four thermistors that go to the indoor unit, which I have running through these two communication cables or whatever four wire cables that go up into the inside of my garage and it's interesting how they have these numbered it's all uh out of order t5 t8 t1 t9 so it's this one to look at the table right here discharge air temp so the wire broke inside but make sure i'm on the right one i uh put a resistor in there and Make sure you didn't have any wires crossed, but it's reading the value of the resistor, which is 220k ohm, so looks like it's good. So a good way to know, track down which one you're working on, if you look at cross because I just put a fixed known resistor. That was like 220k or so on there. And then uh, here's my, I'm glad I have a label maker now, discharge air tip. So, and this red, okay, this goes right here. I had to drill a hole and add this. So, I don't know, something was wrong with the connection. I'm gonna plug it back in and make sure it reads. Okay, it actually kicked on heat. Frederick carrier. <laughs> and it's about 103 coming out. So it's got about, it's already heated from 68 or so up to 72 real quick. So, but it's got like a 30 degree temp rise right now. That's pretty sweet. We'll see what it sounds like outside. Sounds good. My little cardboard temporary splitter thing is got all ruined, so I threw it away. And I could feel cold as air sucking back in here, so it's recirculating cold air, just like in the summer it recirculates hot air. It needs the grill with the divider put on there. If I just add a couple inches of a splitter out there, it seems to be okay. I just need to cut a piece of sheet metal or something. I just stick it on there. But anyway, it's working. I do need to take one of the cards and dump the new software on to reflash this. It has the old, old, old FCU program in there, but it's not critical right now. I just need to do it before summer. But pretty cool. Feel the refrigerant lines running. <laughs> I never did foam seal this yet, but no biggie. Okay, now that I got this working, I just turned it off, unplugged it outside, and plugged it in to this, and fired it back up. So right now it's throttling up. It's getting back up there again, 95 degrees. Um, so basically, and it says uh, 10 amps at 120, so that'd be about five amps or so at 230 probably some losses through the transformers and everything so 120 volt out going through the yellow cord little cord goes over here I'm gonna step up transformer 230 volts twist lock over <laughs> here oh yeah see six amps now so it did throttle up almost seven amps at 230 volts so pretty much double that and that's your amperage at 120 volts. Oh, that's, yeah, more like 11 amps almost. So, so it's actually might not be losing too much to the transformer at all, really. 100, oh shit, 114. I've really cranked it, turn that up. So, it does seem to back off a little bit once it starts recirculating some air out there. I added a piece of cardboard though. <laughs> makeshift all green lights no no fault links that's good seven there so. it's pretty mild so even if it recirculates a little bit there's gonna be a lot of heat in this outside air because it's probably like just above 60 out here still we got into the 70 about 72 for high so so this unit right now is running on those batteries, the batteries that were hooked up to that. For right now, I mean, these batteries, it's not as many as I had hooked up before, but, well, yeah, it's about how many I probably had hooked up just to AC before, close to it. And uh, it's that inverter and 
just loafing to power this up. Dang, that, that air is freaking warm. 125, it's upside down there. But look at the fan is on auto and it doesn't seem to be blasting it like it was earlier. So that's definitely warm as heck sitting right here. Oh my goodness. So fan, I think I bumped it. Continuous, oh, here's the speed. There it goes, it's ramping up. Can't even hear that fan run when it's on low, even though it's definitely blowing air. So, won't be as tempered now with it cranked up. Put that on auto, just cut that on there. So, yeah, it's dropping a little bit in temperature. Man, that's freaking nice. Man, yeah, yeah. And it's running off of power from the sun. Actually, it was power I was charging in the batteries today from the sun, and now running on this. I'm probably just gonna let this fucker run balls out for a while. So, uh, this resets after a while. Output 1.6 kilowatts. That's probably about right. 13.2 amps at 120 volt. So, it explains why I'm seeing like 7 amps out there at 230. Cool. Okay, bottom pack is uh, 8 and 8, 16 batteries, 14 amps, and then this is 3 times 8, 24 batteries, about a little over 25 amps. So together, DC, we're pushing like 39 amps. 39 amps, and at 48 volts, that's some pretty serious juice. <laughs> Have a yeah, bam. One day when I put a really serious load on that thing, I'll have to come out here and see what that thing's pulling. So it's been running in heat for a little bit. And this wasn't quite fully charged, I don't think, because I've had it turned off for a while and everything, and I haven't fine tuned it. 46 volts, 0 .0. So I think that's, I think that's the lowest it's going to run off of a inverter from the batteries. I think if it drops again. And there might be some time to that. It's going to switch to AC power. 118 degrees. So it's still pretty toasty warm. And that's with the fan up on high now. The solar's unplugged, which has been unplugged all day. 45.9. A pretty. Sure, it's still at the default setting, which is, I thought it said 46 volts. And 44 is like the low voltage alarm. It's down to 45.5 volts or so. Now it's still running, but I'm looking here on the perimeters. So it says uh, under voltage alarm at 44. So I think that's when it'll start hollering at me. Low voltage disconnection voltage 42. I thought it said it's going to switch to AC power at 46, but that could have been changed or I don't know. We'll see. I might have not realized what settings. I think I have it on this setting. Utility power. So basically solar energy provides power to loads as priority. If solar energy is not enough to power all connected loads, the battery energy will supply power to the loads at the same time. Utility power. Utility provides power to the loads only when battery voltage drops to low level set point in program four, which is right here, 46 volts default, and that's what I was going by. So, setting voltage point back to utility source when selecting SPU or SOL. I'm on SPU. Uh, when the voltage of the battery is lower than this setting, the output switches from inverting to utility. The setting range is 44 volts to 52. It says 46 default, which I assume that's where that would have been. So, I would think it would have switched to uh, utility power but it hasn't, it's still actually running on the batteries, which it shows no bars, it's pretty much down to its minimum. So 45.1 volts, still going though. Uh, look at how it shows this thing, almost 25%. I know it's not using 50% of its rated output, but I guess it's just where the bar segments go because it's more than 25%, it brought on the next segment being a 1.6 kilowatt. 1.7 kilowatt now. 
25 volts. Like it says there. AC power is available because I have it plugged in. Interesting thing. So nine amps, and I, uh, I didn't pay attention to the volts earlier. It's probably wrong because it's got a, you know, a modified sine wave evidently is what I'm guessing that this thing outputs. So it says 182 volts there input but this thing's totally happy so seems to not mind it so that's good but uh yeah but i did some just some cheap little ac voltage thing i bought seems pretty accurate when it's got the ac sign we're going to it but uh, so 115 volts ac 116 volts so yeah i'm not gonna check the 230 volts right now because I don't want a chance breaking the connection. Just heard it click. So it just went to bypass mode it, when it was just getting down to low 44 volts there. It didn't do an alarm or anything <laughs> beeping or whatnot. So it just switched over to AC power. Interesting. So anyway, so it ran about half hour pretty much. I think it's 527 now. It was about five-ish when I turned it on before. So I would hope to get more than that out of the batteries, so I might have to do one more test right after the solar charges up. Maybe do another test tomorrow when I get home from work. See how it goes. So I did look in the perimeters, and perimeter four is the battery power to utility set point. So when it's supposed to switch to utility when the batteries reach that set point. Default is 46, but it was set at 44. So, okay, so that explains that mystery. And then the utility to battery is way up at 56. Oops, so, uh, should be perimeter five and it's still at 56 so i was just kind of curious so with the battery slowly charge up there it goes the sun's pretty much gone so it's already gone so it's coming and going as far as charge up the capacitors which then are dumping into the battery um slowly doing it but 49 volts is what my battery's back up to so it doesn't switch back to battery until 56 you could change that but that's just what it's set for default so so at this point it wouldn't it wouldn't send out the 120 volts on the back to battery until it gets good and charged.